On part two of two, Ed volunteers to have his Thai critiqued by linguist Stu J. Raj. So if you're trying to learn Thai and want a close-up lesson in precision and technique, you'll love this episode of the Bangkok Podcast. Sawa de Krupp, and welcome to the Bangkok Podcast. My name is Greg Jorgensen, a Canadian who just checked the weather back in my hometown of Calgary, saw that it was, not kidding here, minus 41 degrees Celsius, and giggled and giggled and giggled. <laughs> I am with you. I am with you. I'm Ed Knuth, an American who came to Thailand on a one-year teaching contract 22 years ago, fell in love with winter being three weeks where I don't need air conditioning, so I never left. <laughs> so it's one just one extreme or the other, right? It's like that, that's insanely winter. cold or just yeah. <laughs> all right, we want to give a big thanks to all of our patrons who support the show. Patrons get our ad-free regular show a day early, behind the scenes photos of our interviews, a heads up to send questions to upcoming guests, and access to our Discord server to chat with me, Greg, and other listeners around the world. But best of all, patrons also get an unscripted uncensored bonus episode every week where we riff on current events and Bangkok topics. On this week's bonus show, we chatted about Greg's upcoming trip to Vietnam, the tragedy surrounding the sinking of a Thai Navy warship, and why Thais should be more outraged, and thoughts on learning Thai from a foreign teacher versus a Thai teacher, which we'll, of course, get more into on this week's main show. To learn how to become a patron, click the support button at the top of our website. Right on. And as always, if you have a comment, a show idea, or just want to say hi, head to BangkokPodcast.com and click the little microphone button on the bottom right to leave us a voicemail that we will play on the show. Just a quick reminder, we want everyone who is listening, who is not living in Thailand to do that, head to our website and leave us a voicemail telling us one thing you miss about Bangkok and are looking forward to uh, getting back into when you come back, because we're going to use that on an upcoming clip show. For and, sure. Uh, quick before we get into the main show, uh, Ed, you hear? can you hear this? I can. You know what that is? No. I met, uh, I, well, I had the, the other night, I had the pleasure of meeting one of our listeners, our friend named Graham, and uh, we went out for a quick little dinner with his nice family, and he brought me one liter Damn. of maple syrup. Dude, I'm coming over. I'm taking half of that, because that's a gift to the Bangkok podcast. Look at I'm, that. I'm bringing a jar over, and I'm taking half of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. 33.8 <laughs> fluid ounces. Nice. So, uh, yeah, many thanks to Graham. That's going to go well in my pancakes. I'm going to cook myself this weekend. Yeah. Thanks, Graham. I know you <laughs> meant half of that to go to me, so. <laughs> All right. Well, this episode is part two of two of a show where Ed gets some help on his 20-year quest to improve his Thai from our resident Thai language expert, Stu J. Raj. Now, for this lesson, Ed recorded a quick conversation in Thai that Stu will go through and critique, offering his advice in the aim to help us all understand the mysteries of Thai a little bit better. So here is part two of Ed's conversation and Ajahn Stu's sage guidance. Have a listen to this. So let's move on because we've got another okay, one. Sure. Sure. Okay, so you saw that. Okay, she, she said, Wait, what is un? I don't even know. Okay, what right. Means. And so she threw that in. It's not natural Thai to actually say it like that, but she knows that she's needing to sort of speak, I won't say baby talk, but make her really simplify her Thai. Un means another or other. So you oh, un. Okay. So they live in another province. Now, in Thai, we would, she would, if we we're in a normal conversation, she'd say, blau, blau, not mai, blau. You could say mai, but blau means not. So, blau, uh. pome you call a jangwa. Kola uh. is the normal Thai way of saying another. But uh, uh, she see. probably thinks that kola, you might not understand it because kon means uh, person. Uh, so, okay. she said un, meaning other. So, uh. dad and mom are in another jangwa. <laughs> Funny. Yeah, I mean, I I just guessed from context. Yeah. Uh, I didn't really even understand what she was saying, so I just guessed from context. I think the important lesson to take from this is that native speakers will pitch the language back at you at what they perceive your level is. 
that sure, that perception sure. comes from your prosody and your vowels. Um, sure. So if you can you can fake it to a point if you start to really work on your vowels and prosody. So at least the reflection of the language coming back from your interlocutor, the person you're speaking to, um, is going to then be more natural. Hmm. Understood. Understood. So okay, let's look at the next bit. Okay, there are another. Okay, now I know what's coming next. I want you to say this with me. Lampang with the throat closed on the P. Lampang. Lampang. Now drag it. Bang. The common tone in Thai is normal voice and it kind of just dies off at the end, but it stays level for a bit. So bang. Lampang. Perfect. Now listen to what you say. You lampang law. You lampang law. Ah, I see. Okay, to a Thai, okay. that's totally different. So listen hmm. to her saying it and you saying it. You lampang. You lampang law. And so right, I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, I've yeah. got them here next, just um, in juxtaposition so you can hear them. Have a listen. Lampang. 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 <laughs> right. Right. You can really hear right, that right. aspiration, lampang. You can hear the pop over the P. So sure, it's all sure. about the throat again. Lam bang bang. Well, well, this whole length thing of the vowels. I mean, I, you know, I, I knew this intellectually, like you know, because I've read Thai grammar books twenty years ago, and I know they're short and long. But this is really teaching me that I'm just not good at doing it in practice. Like I, you know, I read it, the theory, but that's not the same. I'm just forgetting about it when I'm talking. I'm just don't use the word not good at it because then then you're gonna just think that you're not good i I, I think you're good and i've heard heard you do it well it's just that you haven't practiced it that way or you've 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 built it into your muscles it's just going to take a little bit of rejigging um let's have a look what's next okay now this is this is where i really wanted to look at have a look at this this is that word again chiang chiang meaning city from cheng in chinese listen to what you do i want you to see if you can hear it well are you talking about the the Tiong word or the Rai word? Because I was trying to roll my R, which is which I'm not good at as an American. I was trying to say Rai. Rai. That, that isn't that that part is actually pretty fine. The thing okay. that really stands out in this is that I know that you're thinking of English spelling when you're listening to this. Because if you're we thinking yeah. of the Thai spelling, there's no way you would do this. When you get to Chiang, I'm thinking you're thinking of an C H whatever N G at the end, right? For sure. For and sure. so that G is screaming in your subconscious. Uh, I see. Right. Okay. Okay. Which there is not even a G in the Thai subconscious because it's a ngong at the end. Chiang, right, right. Chiang. It's a nasal caught in here. So Chiang Rai, Chiang Rai, Chiang Rai. Right. Chiang Rai. Now see. Now you've Chiang done the gi. Yeah, you've got the gi. You've done the gi. Um, you've done the G at the end. There's no G. It's a ngong or chiang rai. Chiang rai. Chiang. 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 No, not chiang. No A. Chiang. Chiang. See how you're doing it fast too? Chiang. Yeah. Chiang. Yeah. Chiang. You're still doing ung. It's not ung. It's ee. Yeah. Ee. Yeah. Chiang. Yeah. Yeah. Chiang. Chia. Now stretch it out. Chiang. Chiang. God, Beautiful. Chi- uh, you know, you know this whole idea of ngong u not being a G, that messes with my mind because I see N-G. Like when I think of ngong u. There's no G. I know, but in English we write it N-G, N-G. Yeah. So it's chiang. And then, so that means there's nothing sticking between chiang and then rai. So it's chiang rai. Chiang rai. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, wow. You know, this, uh, it's not just uh, your precision, but it's actually also the video. Uh, listeners, uh, uh, Stu and I are on a video call, although, although you guys aren't going to get the video version of it. But uh, actually seeing his mouth position and seeing his lips, and of course this is part of his teaching technique, the mechanics of the mouth but man it really helps to hear you say it and see your lips at the same time and then have you and then have the technical explanation it it's totally it's totally different i think the biggest superpower in language learning is being able to hear sounds agnostic of your mother tongue and then being able to reproduce them 
Well, I mean, as this as this uh, feedback session is proof, I haven't given up yet. But I, I I I did realize a while back that I just have to stop using transliteration, and I've got to get back to because I do know the Thai characters. I'm just so rusty that I read very very slowly. But I think the key, I think, if you, I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing you would agree. I think the key is if you want to be more than a beginner in Thai, you have you have to stop using English characters. Is that, would you say that's accurate? And, and people say, oh, but look, you, you don't need to learn to write. Yeah, maybe not. And Chinese has Hai Yu Pinyin, the Pinyin system using Roman letters, and Vietnamese has um, the Guoc Ngu, um, so their style. But one, no Chinese people, if you try and write in Pinyin to a Chinese, they'll just laugh you out of the room. You, oh, you okay. eventually need to read the characters or if you're using WeChat. In Vietnamese, I was there just recently and it's basically almost all of the expats. I probably met one out of hundreds that I met that can actually read the writing in Roman script correctly. Otherwise they just butcher it and they're just as incomprehensible. And so to escape that loop, just learn the sound system, just learn the letters and you won't be getting any of these G's or anything jumping in your subconscious. Right, right, yeah. No, this is my uh, my my vow is to get back into reading, Chengrai. Chengrai. It almost comes as an extra syllable. Chengrai. 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 Mm. So mm-hmm. just listen to that again. Chengrai. Chengrai. You can hear it. Boom! I'm looking at it as an audio. Oh, you can hear the G for sure. You can hear the G for sure. It almost throws an extra syllable in there. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Okay. Next. Me pisao song kon. Pisao song kon la. Okay. This is a perfect example of a feedback loop. Me pisao song kon. Now, first of all, listen to her again. It's this. Me pisao song kon. Kon. Could you hear the spit? Absolutely, absolutely. The roughness in the okay. throat. Yeah, sure. So the key of this lesson is what you hear. Make it a feedback loop and put it back through your mouth. Pisao song kon. I would try and mimic that. Kon. Right. But kon. Kon. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Kon. No, no, okay. Come Let's on. work on this. Um, your oh, I want you to pucker up more. Oh, corn, corn, yeah. as opposed to corn. oh, 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 uh, corn, beautiful corn. Me peace out song corn. So she said that to you. If I were learning, I'd say me peace out song corn. I'd say it exactly the way you that try she said copy, it. Try to copy her pronunciation. But what you it. did, you threw a English sound envelope. You've got two sisters. Right, 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 right. Exactly, that's right. Me pisao song kon. Pisao song kon la. Me pisao song kon la. You've got two sisters instead of song kon. Mm-hmm. Okay, so her tones are very distinct. Me pisao song kon. Me pisao mm-hmm. song kon. Song kon. Right, yeah, yeah. When, when, I, when I say it back, it does not sound the same. Right, so <laughs> whether it's a question or a statement, the tone doesn't change, which is different to English. Mm, that, okay. That's the important thing. So if I want to say, oh, you've got two sisters, I would say it identically. Me I understand. I get it. Okay. You got two sisters. Right. So it's like it's like we what we said before about the word really. So in English we'd go really, but you're saying that that intonation is not a Thai thing. Exactly. Okay. You cannot use it. those sound rules. I call them sound envelopes across to another language. I have the classic one is, how are you? Sawadee kap. How are you? Uh, um, uh, it's, or thank you. Kop kun kap. It's not. Sawadee uh, kap. Kop kun kap. You just got to break out of those envelopes. Okay, understood, next. Understood. Cindy, are you Okay. I almost, Cindy, are you Taurai? I almost heard a linking R because you're an American. You have a rotal R jumping in uh, there. Are you uh, like, are you, like, are you? Uh, Correct. Okay. Have a listen to this. Uh, Cindy, are you Tarayana Cup? Are you? Uh, it almost sounds like your throat's okay. going towards an R. It doesn't make a full R, but I can hear this rotalization at the end, which just does not exist. Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you? Beautiful. And again, it's not you. You're getting the U really nicely now. Are you? Taurai. Taurai. Beautiful. Are you? Taurai. Are you? Taurai. Yeah. Are you? You goes up at the end. Are you? Are you? Are you Taurai? Taurai. Lahab. Taurai. Beautiful. Now listen to this. Put Pasangrit Gang Gang Mai. Okay, this is 
this is a very good sample. Poor Pasangkit Keng, mate. Now, this is an example of somebody trying to make sentences up in Thai on the fly from their English. <laughs> Do you speak English well? Now, many people would learn Keng Keng Ma. You're really good. So, do you speak English good? Um, <laughs> you can't use gang in that sense. So, put oh, okay. gang, mate. Right? Gang means very clever, and no one would call themselves gang. It's something that you're called. You would never claim oh, that I you see. are gang. Hmm. Okay. So, you're saying you shouldn't ask someone if they're gang because that you're putting them in a weird position, you're saying. It's just awkward, and it doesn't make so. Do you speak gang? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm really gang. Uh, it's like oh, saying, are you awesome? Yeah, that is oh. awesome. Oh, I get it. Okay, okay. You, uh, you wouldn't say that. You would say, how is your English? Hello. How is your English? And then it would feel less awkward to, uh, to, but you've pretty much done it word for word from English, I guess. Do you speak English well? Which wouldn't right. sound bad in English. Right, that right. well turning but, into gang, though, doesn't work. But gang is too strong is what you're saying. It's too strong and you just wouldn't say that. You wouldn't, Brahman, Brahman is to evaluate. So you wouldn't actually evaluate it in your question to them. You'd let them mm. give it to you. So so what's the correct way to say it then? Like, put on grit, yang, yang ai, yang ai, or? I, I, I would say, if in normal conversation, ow, ow, it's like, and so, lao, pasang grit, ben yang ai bang. Oh, Ben Yang Ai Bang. Ben Yang Ai uh, Bang. Bang. Oh, Ben. Oh, Ben, as in ability. Yeah, Ben right. Yang Ai. Ben Yang Ai Bang. And stretch that Bang. Ben Yang Ai Bang. Ben Yang Ai Bang. Pasangkit Ben Yang Ai Bang. How is your English? Pasangkit Ben Yang Ai Bang. And that's an uh, open okay. question then. And she can answer it however she... Understood. Understood. <clears throat> she wants to do it. That, that would feel a little more natural. Next. Mm. Okay. Papa. Okay. Another one. So remember, we did aspiration. Blah blah blah. Mumu papa. Now again, in Thai, they say ah blah with the L in there. For Thai languages, because of that glottal thing, clusters are difficult. So blah turns into ba. Your tongue kind of makes it to an L, but doesn't say it in colloquial Thai. To the point that in Lao, they actually drop the L out of the spelling. And they call it. Oh, they do. Okay, okay. Yeah, but what you've done here, I want you to listen. Uh, tell me what's going on with your P. So it should be is snake. So you think so ties you're saying ties don't drop the L, but it might not be as strong. The tongue makes a gesture to it but doesn't go the whole hog. So what what is ba 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 la la that's fine if blah. you say it like that the main thing is getting the p right so ba la la and then let's let's do the um the snake with your new u in the back of your throat rather than ngu. let's push it back further i feel like i'm talking with my throat now let's do the difference between stupid more and snake more because this this or closed o is the lips are in the identical position. The only difference is for the o more more your tongue is high and the your tongue is low at the back. So more 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 is stupid more. Wow, that is really back in the throat. I almost feel like a, a ventriloquist not moving my lips and not moving. Everything is happening in the back of, yeah. Yeah, okay, this wow. is, you're going to be glottally enlightened after this. And, <laughs> and, so, and so if you're going to say then snake, snake, fish, fish, which means sort of um, very rudimentary. Right. Um, <laughs> But, yeah. <laughs> and and both of those are long vowels. Oh, funny. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Okay, next. And top ma krung tap Okay, so this is another vowel length. I'm, uh, I won't spend a lot of time on it, but just make sure for the word to like top. It's long. Top. Top. Listen how fast yours was. And top ma krung tap. Top ma 
for sure, for sure, for sure. ลูกเปล่านะครับลูกเปล่านะครับ That was fine. Okay, next. <laughs> okay, Kaute. Kaute means to understand, Kao to enter, Jai the heart or the mind. If you ask a Thai to point to their mind, they'll point here. Same with most Chinese and people in this part of the world. Kao right, right. to enter the heart. Actually, there's a saying when I'm doing um, uh, leadership workshops in Thai and Thai companies, and you talk about what's the trait of a good leader, and they'll say, "Dong ao zai kao ma sai zai lao, ao zai kao to take his heart or her heart ma sai zai lao, put in our heart, meaning empathy." Which is a nice term, but it's one of these cliche topics that you hear. So kote, kote. Um, but we wouldn't say that in Thai normally. Kote, kote. In this circumstance, like I understand, I understand. We would just say k a p I see. So kao chai. So kao chai is more formal. Like as a student, as a student, you might say kao chai. You would or? use kote for the actual act of comprehension. Hmm. Otherwise, cup you're just receiving. It's like saying, and that's what the word cup, by the way, means. k a r a p may I receive, and uh, may okay. it be received what I've said. k a r a p k a r a p and so okay. when you're saying, so if she's just said something, and you're just, mm. if I just want to say got it, I should just say cup. Cup. That's it. Yeah. Okay. There's only one or two more. This isn't. Then nakrian or pound a cup. Okay, nakrian. Again, you're aspirating the k at the end. Of course, it's at the end of the syllable. Kill the throat. So naklian, naklian, n a k n a k r i a n No, see how your 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 liaison, the k to the r, it has to be naklian. There's no k. Nak, it's not nakrian. Nakrian. Beautiful. Naklian. Naklian. No, you, I could hear a pop. Naklian. Naklian. Beautiful. Got it. Okay. Naklian. Okay. You must use that glottal stop at the end. To not do mm-hmm. it. Is going to throw listeners off. Uh, okay, next. Law, more laws. Chai. And then she says chai again. You're saying law chai. Chai does not mean yes. By the way, it means it is. It is true. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's no word for yes in Thai. Man, it's like not, this. Uh, I'm. A, I. I will go back and listen to this again, just because I feel that. There's three or four different things. I mean, obviously, there's many small points you've made, but I mean, another thing besides it, we have like the glottal stops and and the the length of vowels and things like that, but also just word choice, like w- words that I would have thought are interchangeable. You're pointing out that hey, they're really not for Thai people. They wouldn't use that. They w- they wouldn't you know say gin lao. They would say dum lao. Like this word choice thing is another thing I'm picking up from your feedback. Yeah, totally. There's this guy, David Martin. He's in one of the Thai groups, and he went around and collected native samples. Now he's up to six thousand sentences. Oh, I think I saw that. No, I I, I downloaded that PDF. Uh, he might even be up to seven. I think last week I saw he said he was up to like seven thousand or something. It's so I actually made a tool, and you can see on YouTube, put a bunch of stuff out where I go into the nuance. Because yeah, you could learn those sentences as you know maybe space repetition or something. But there's so much. Magic in the nuance in each one of those little sentences. There's a lot of repetition, so you don't need a lot of words to sound good or even mm. near native. But it's mm. knowing how to use it and the nuance of things like l versus l versus l versus b l a u You know, uh, different different ways to use these basic words are going to have a night and day effect on how your Thai sounds. Mm. No, no, I appreciate it. Uh, There's yeah. one, one last one. Can I work sure, on? Sure. And this will be the last one. Um, I, I didn't have it in that clip. Is but how you say the vowel u uh, in the word chu name? Chu, chu. Yeah. So, so let's do this. Um, can you say e? E. Right. The letter u uh and the letter e are actually stemming from the same point. They are cousins. The only difference is u uh is going back towards your throat, towards that. So can you say uh, right now? Just get rid of the spit u uh, and smile. No, smile. Uh, smile. Uh, uh, you have to like pull your lips back. Pull your I can hear uh, your u uh echoing in your head. I don't want to hear it echo. Uh, And your e uh, should be the same, so e is lateral. And then for the u, uh, uh, your lips don't change, so the e is la u, e u. It's just your tongue uh, doing a Mexican wave in the back of your mouth towards uh, the throat. U. Uh. Yeah, this vowel. But uh, I remember back in the day. I mean, d- t- literally 20 y e a r s ago, having big problems with Sara u uh, u. Uh, and I remember my Thai teacher telling me to pull my 
smile and it's just I, for me it's for me it's the hardest mm. vowel so uh, let's just say that once and that can that can be a wrap say the word name chu chu getting better just relax and keep your lateral tongue but it's something to sit and work out but it's you don't want to sound too forced it's not chu but chu right too. right 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 you know there's certain things that um like when i try to roll my r it's I, I'm unpracticed, so I have to kind of intentionally do it, and it's not smooth. And so I, I think your points that you're giving me, I'm really going to have to practice these things on my own just through repetition. Because I think I think if I in a normal conversation, I, will, I think I'll be thinking about it too much. It might take three to six months to unpack everything. Oh sure, no, no, no. I, 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 this is this is great, man. Uh, I like I said, I, it's many levels. And uh, w- once you point something out, I can hear it straight away, either in my voice or her voice. It's just such a, like the length of the vowels thing. That, to me, that's that might be the, hopefully it'll be the easier thing to fix. I think the glottal stop is going to take me a while to build up that back of the throat sound. Intellectually, I get it completely. Start but listening it, to Russell Brand a lot and just copying his English. Stops in it. Well, let me uh, let, let me wrap up with just a general question for you um, about learning Thai. Since you know our listeners are 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 probably at least at the very least they are Thai curious. So either they're actual expats or they're people who visit Thailand a lot. So w- would your general advice be to focus on learning a relatively small number of words and phrases, but getting the pronunciation right? as opposed to piling on a lot of words. So are, are, you, are you a quality or quantity guy in the beginning? What's the better approach? The very beginning is get your sounds right. As long okay. as you have that foundation of sound, then you're setting yourself up. One, no matter what you say, ties are going to understand you. And so you won't get angry or jaded. That, Why don't they understand what I'm saying? And then as you learn to pronounce those sounds, you're actually learning to hear them. And so you're going to be actually every single time you interact with a Thai will become a, a lesson for you. And so mm. the, I don't believe, I've never actually learned a language from a teacher. It's all come from the environment and then going back home and checking against resources that I have at home. But all of the languages that I speak come from my exposure to the environment and oh, extracting right, right. the language. And so, as, and, and the thing is, you get the sounds, you hear what they're saying, you say it back. If people still aren't understanding you, you iron that bit out. But keep working. Don't just go and you know do this hardcore. What's what's the word? Brute force. You know, I'm going to say I'm, it until I'm, you I'm understand. I'm going to learn a thousand words. I'm going to learn a thousand words in a week. Like, mm. I think that's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. Yeah, you need to get the sounds right. Once you've got the sounds right, though, you'll find the actual words start to drop in because it's in your muscles already. Hmm. I think that's great advice. Um, uh, to some extent, I did that. Uh, I just, uh, I didn't stick with it. I think that, I think my, my main issue, I think, was I had a decent start and then um, I reached that plateau of being okay where a lot of Thai people are, are telling you your Thai is really good. There's, you, and you're better than a lot of foreigners who have almost nothing. And so then you just rest you know, you just rest right there. And, um, but if you, if you really want to talk like a Thai person, it just takes more work than that for sure. Yeah. And I, and I go to, it's, it's not saying you want to talk like a Thai just because you've set this super high goal. You don't have to have a deep, deep level of Thai to talk to or speak like a Thai, like a Thai mm-hmm. again, is this prosody just to the point where when you open your mouth, like you saw that she actually switched the vocab because she knew that she anticipated that your vocab wasn't going to be at a certain place. And so she had to down gear her tie. Right. You don't right, want right, that. Right. Yeah. No, this idea of focusing on rhythm, uh, vowel length, uh, and just getting the sounds right in the beginning. I think that is, uh, that's great advice, man. I think it's, it, it's great advice for me as, uh, I think after 20 years, I'm probably a, I don't know, advanced beginner. I don't think I'm intermediate level. Um, but, he, but, but it's great advice for me, but even perfect advice for just raw, the true raw beginner. Yeah. And I, I, I hope to everyone else listening out there that a lot of the stuff reflected in this, um, some of it has been relevant for you as well, because like Ed has been wonderful being a, um, we call it Nama, 
He, he he was like the what's the word? not scapegoat, but you you were the stooge <laughs> in the audience, right? To, for sure, <laughs> that we could me. <laughs> set up. But uh, honestly, right. a lot of these things were, were gold for many many learners out there. Cool, man. Uh, well, I just want to say thanks again. Um, and next time we got to put Greg through this. I want to. It's not just me that should be tortured like this, Greg. This is good torture. So I want it for my buddy Greg. Awesome. Yes, Greg. I'm coming for you. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, man, it's funny because uh, this uh, interview really we thought was going to be one show. And then when Stu gets into it, like he goes in detail. So like I think we like our plan was to talk for like 30 or 40 minutes. And then we went for almost two hours, which we probably could have made three episodes out of. (laughs) But we decided to go. We decided to go with two. but at listeners, uh, as you, if you didn't know before, you you now know that uh, Stu is pretty detail oriented. But uh, I gotta be perfectly honest, I found all the advice really helpful. Right. Yeah. And you know, I think a lot of a lot of Thai teachers uh, like what they do, and they do it because they have, you know, a real love of learning and teaching foreigners and explaining stuff to them. But people like Stu, like he's got passion. About language. explaining stuff, right? He, sure. he approaches that like I approach Star Wars trivia. Like it's just <laughs> something he's hot. Like even if he wasn't, if, even if it wasn't his thing, like if he worked in a company somewhere doing like sure. accounting, he'd still be super nerdy about Thai language. For sure, for sure. Or just about language in general, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, listeners, uh, we talk a lot about this on the bonus show this week. Uh, in particular, we talk about um, why there might actually be some advantages to learning Thai from a foreigner such as Stu, which normally you wouldn't think that would make sense. Like, why would you learn Thai language from from someone who's not Thai? But I think uh, in special cases like Stu, there may be some advantages because he knows what how native English speakers think. And, and like a lot of his advice is he can see why you're making the mistake you're making. So we talk about this a lot on the bonus show, but um, you're going to have to become a patron if you if you want to hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it's interesting because there are some roadblocks, some opaque areas where, um, you know, you just sort of need to see it from a foreigner's perspective to really explain what the issue is. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't say, like, you know, learning only from a Thai teacher is better than learning for only from a foreign teacher or whatever. I think a good mix is, is really important. But Agreed. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. No one answer for everyone. But, yeah, many thanks to Stu for coming on the show. We always love having you on. We all know that the next time Stu comes on, it's going to be for your Thai lesson, Mr. Greg. I don't know if I'm as brave as you, man, hanging yourself out there to uh, get critiqued publicly. It's, it's not easy. <laughs> Come on, dude. You can do it. I, th- I think you're – well, for one thing, your your Thai vocabulary is definitely better than mine. Like you uh, – I, th- I think just – in general, just you've worked on it. I think I think you've done more work recently. Like you and I both made an effort many years ago, and then we mm. plateaued. But the last couple of years, you've definitely done more studying than I have. Well, I, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. <laughs> but thanks for that, Stu. That was really great. All right, Stu. We'll see you next time. Thank you. All right, let's get into some love, loathe, or live with, where one of us picks a particular aspect of living in Bangkok, which we discuss to decide if it's something that we love about living here, loathe about living here, or have come to accept as something that we just have to learn to live with no matter how we feel about it. Last week, we did a Would You Rather, where Ed asked me if I'd rather learn an easier language than Thai. So this week, it is my turn. All right, man. Well, I've got something for you. It's uh, not the most exciting thing in the world. It's not going to burn up the charts, but it's something that we have to do, all have to do from time to time. And, uh... The other day, I found myself in a market here in Bangkok, and I wanted to buy something, and I got into the haggling process. Hmm. What do you What do you think about that? About the back and forth that is almost expected when you buy something from a market, the uh, up and down, the back and forth. Actually, I like this topic. Um, I I feel like it's something we haven't talked about much, um, and I always feel weird as a foreigner uh, haggling about price because. On the one hand, I do feel sometimes uh, that uh, Thai vendors increase prices when they see foreigners. You know, I'll ask someone how sure, much. Yeah. I ask someone how much some something is, and I think they give a higher price than if you're a Thai person. Um, but you never know for sure if if the price isn't posted. Um, and I would say, in general, I am not big into haggling. Like I, I, I find it kind of annoying. I've got some friends who. Uh, who I've seen them haggle and I'm just 
don't want to do it. You know, it's just, mm. it's like such an effort and I, I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, I, I don't need to like shave off the last 30 baht off something. So I usually, I usually have a number in mind that I'm willing to pay. Uh, and then, right. you know, I will, I will make some effort for it, but I, I, I don't know. I'm just not that motivated. In, in a way, it's a little bit like with taxis. This is part of my annoyance with taxis is that I just don't want to haggle. Like that's why I want to use the meter because I don't like to I don't like to get into a thing like oh that's two hundred baht how about one fifty oh no one seventy I don't want to right. do that I don't want to do that I just want to get in the taxi uh, and I'm kind of like that in shops so I will do some you know because I know a lot of times they just throw out some like ridiculous price you know yeah right like it's like four times what it should be and you're like, yeah so I would say I'm a moderate haggler so maybe, maybe I'm maybe I'm just a live with but i definitely don't like it i mean some like i said i've got some friends that seem to like relish that process but i do not man what, what about you yeah i think i'm the same way but you know i also find i like i agree with everything you said but i also find it quite easy to actually surprisingly enjoy it once i force myself into it hmm. like once i once i tell myself that like hey this is just a game like it's back and forth and oh, they right. expect it and i can speak thai well enough that i can you know that i can yeah, you know, make it a bit fun. Then I find it surprisingly enjoyable. But, but if, but like, like you said, if I know, like, I will pay X for that, and if they tell me ten baht above X, I'll be like, fine, great, I'm out, done. Yeah, that's right, that's right. You know? Yeah, I think maybe I haven't just peaked, or you know, I know it's necessary in some situations, and it's not, it's not offensive. Like they expect you to haggle, so it's it's right. just part of the game. Like I, I understand this, uh, and you know it's funny. I uh, back in the day when I was more into playing guitar and I was uh, buying and selling guitars, and I had some friends who were doing it. You know, we were discussing strategies, and one one friend of mine was talking about how he 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 has like a walk away strategy, right? Where, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. he you know he's negotiating, and then they won't give him his price, so he just turns and walks away. And he said it really works. Where like yeah. he, you know he would turn and like take three steps and then say okay twelve thousand, you know, mm. and then he turned back around. And it's like I always thought it was kind of I don't know man like I just don't have that much game or that much patience to like I, like I, I don't I don't want to go that deep into it that I've got lay, layers of strategy, <laughs> but but whatever I, I could see how it could be fun. But well, it also depends what you do. I mean, if you're if you're talking about like a diamond ring, right? You're you're not going to be like oh I'll get one I'll get the next at the next shop next door right you know you might you might want to put a bit more thought into it but if you're haggling over like one of those wooden frogs you know that the walk away method is going to be fine because there's ten thousand stores right. that sell the exact same thing in a way it might i might just be too i mean i might just be too american in that uh i, I know there are markets in the u.s where you can haggle but that just wasn't a big part of me growing up i mean i just grew right. up going to you know the mall and just everything has a price and there's just no haggling that's how I grew right. up. So I, I didn't, I didn't right. grow up with like Chatter Chuck Market. And I, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, obviously I, I went to yard sales or garage sales. So I, I obviously I know what haggling is, but it just wasn't part of my growing up. And so in general, I find it pretty annoying. So I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I'm a loathe, but I, I, can, I can I can live with it. But not, yeah, a big, not a big fan. I think the same. If I can avoid it, I can. But if I have to do it, I try to at least have fun with it. And I usually... I'm surprised by how much fun I do have with it. Uh, so. Interesting, interesting. Probably, probably a good attitude. Yeah, hopefully. All right. A final thanks to all of our patrons who support the show. Patrons get a ton of cool perks and the warm, fuzzy feeling knowing that they're helping support the show. Find out more by clicking support on our website and connect with us online. We're Bangkok Podcast on social media, BangkokPodcast.com on the web, or simply BangkokPodcast at gmail.com. We love hearing from our listeners and always reply to our messages. Right on, baby. You can also listen to each episode on YouTube. You can send us a voicemail through our website that will feature on the show or even reach out to me directly on Twitter where I am BKK Greg. So thank you for listening, everyone. Stay warm out there, especially if you're in Canada. And we will see you back here next week. No doubt. <laughs>